This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easy website creation tool. So you might be confused why I am making this video, especially since I told you guys so many times to get an airbrush. Well, you would be surprised to know that I actually don't use my airbrush all that much when I am working on my display pieces. And you can absolutely get great results without it. But first things first, why would you even buy an airbrush? You can primer miniatures but you can do that with a spray can. Zenithal priming, spray can. Varnishing, spray can. And you don't even have to varnish your minis unless you touch them as often as yourself. Okay, but then you have airbrush glazing and value sketching. Let's talk about the latter first. The simplest form of value sketching is a zenithal highlight. But if you use an airbrush, you can build a grayscale on your mini and apply ink or contrast paint over that and you'll get a very nice result rather quickly. The important thing here is that you are able to aim with your airbrush and highlight which parts are exposed to light. Can this method be done without an airbrush? Sure, just use the zenithal highlight and apply transparent contrast paint or ink over that. It won't be as fast or as accurate, but you can still get a squad of Space Marines done in an afternoon. However, the true value for many painters is airbrush glazing. Like standard glazing, where you thin down your paint and apply multiple transparent coats, airbrush glazing works the same. Use a mix of like 80 to 90% of solvent and 10% of pigment. This is great because you can spray a thin layer of paint and go over that with just air until it dries. So applying multiple layers like this is way faster and you don't leave any brush strokes. It's a great tool for shading, but most importantly, blending. Sketch the layers next to each other and then go over them with multiple glazes and you get seamless transition without too much effort. So when it comes to me medium to large surfaces, airbrush glazing is absolutely fantastic. But that's the thing, medium to large surfaces. You can get away with airbrushing on some flat parts on 28mm scale minis, but honestly it works much better on bigger stuff. But even with bigger stuff, if you don't have any visible underlying brush strokes, you will get this sort of airbrushed look. This means that the gradient is too perfect sort of not credible. And usually the paint distribution looks like this. Now this isn't necessarily bad, but usually if you are painting reflections on a cloak or metallic surface or stuff like that, the light distribution will look more like this or like this, and it won't be that evenly spread. Additionally, if you are using airbrush just to glaze a single thing on your mini, it's really annoying that you spend more time cleaning the airbrush instead of actually painting with it. So is there a way to get smooth blends on your minis in a fast and precise way without using an airbrush? Well, yes, that's what this video is about. But before that, we gotta talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Do you just hate coding like I do? Do you just want to focus on your craft instead of spending countless hours on creating a website? Well, you can easily create a website of your dreams without coding with Squarespace. The entire system is very easy. Simply choose a template and since everything is drag and drop based, you can upload your photos there like this and arrange it as you please. This is absolutely great if you are a commission painter or you just want a simple website solution. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial and once you are ready to start, go to squarespace.com zumikito to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, so now we know that if you are getting an airbrush mainly for blending, you will encounter these issues. And if you want to blend very fast without an airbrush, you can do that with wet blending. And I know what you're thinking. Zumikito, you already have a video on that. What the f- Okay, yes, I do. But since then, I also improved and got new insights. And now I truly believe that if you want to paint a fast gradient, wet blending is your best option. And it also opens more options for visual diversity. But we'll talk about that later. But first, what is wet blending? That is very simple. Just look what I am doing on my wet palette. See, I am mixing paint into a gradient. When it comes to doing that on a miniature, you do the same, but you have to act fast. Notice that I first sketch where the reflections are before I start wet blending. This is useful because acrylic paint is usually somewhat transparent, so it'll be easier to focus on blending rather than coverage once we actually start to wet blend. And to actually start wet blending, apply one slightly thicker layer of paint 
and place another layer right next to the previous one. Now since the layers are still wet, smudge one into the other. I do this by vertical brush strokes along the transition, but you could also do a zigzag motion. The most important thing here is that both layers are still wet and active. And as you can see, we got very nice gradient in seconds without an airbrush. Like that, you can control the intensity of your gradient way better than you could with an airbrush, especially when it comes to smaller miniatures. You can even build smaller blends on top of that like I am doing here. Another thing to note is that once I start smudging the layers, I am not looking to get a nice pointy tip on my brush, rather I want a flat tip to smudge the layers easily. So it is not in your best interest to get the smallest brush possible for this. For example, this one is size 2 brush from Redgrass Games and I found it perfect for wet blending on this rope. So I like wet blending because it's very universal. You can use it on a very small space, but also on some bigger flat parts. If you need to try it before actually painting a miniature, simply sketch some layers on a base and then apply them again to smudge them. You will probably notice that one layer will be more prominent than the other and you might end up smudging it further and further. This technique isn't exact science and you can combine it with whatever techniques and brush strokes you need. So you can go back and forth by adding more colors on top of your gradient and it's up to you if you do this by wet blending again or maybe glazing those final highlights. And that's the great advantage. You can easily go back and forth on your miniature and add more layers on top and you would have a hard time doing that with an airbrush. But still, to get that initial gradient, it takes just seconds. When you look at this blade, for example, it took me like 20 minutes. If I wanted to use airbrush for that, I would have to assemble it and then spray like three different layers. Now add to that any time I spend cleaning my airbrush between each step and still, I will most likely have to use some glazes because it's very small part and you cannot aim very well. So wet blending is very fast, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Pretty much the only requirement for wet blending is that you have to keep your paint wet and active. Initially, that can be a difficult task. Using a bit thicker paint to keep it from drying is one way, but as always, you have to spread it. Furthermore, if you touch the paint as it dries, you might create a texture. Even though it might not look like it at the first glance, I created some texture on this fabric because of that. If it's not that bad, it won't be really noticeable or you can paint over that. Easy way to avoid it is by using fresh paint or adding some thinner like this. This will keep your paint from drying and therefore is workable for longer. Also, you can wet blend with any paint, but some are better at it than other. For now, now I used mostly AK Interactive and Vallejo and it works just fine. So because you are racing against time to keep your paint workable, you might be thinking, okay, so why don't you just use oils, you fool? And fair enough, you can use oils for that. But personally, I don't really like them. I wonder why. Oh yeah. But seriously, yes, you can use oils to get some fast gradients going. But the issue is that you have to wait for a long time to work on them again. And instead of waiting a full day to paint more, smaller gradients on top of my minis, I would rather use acrylics to do it right away. So now that you took a base and practiced your wet blending skills to perfection and you can paint gradients super fast on your minis, is there even any value in getting an airbrush? Well. The obvious answer is yes, there is. With airbrush, it's still very easy to sketch reflections on your minis and spray a contrast paint over that for super quick and effective paint job. Therefore, it's absolutely great tool for speed painting. So if you wanna know how you can speed paint a space marine like this one, watch this video. And if you are starting with airbrush from scratch, you can watch this video where there is everything you need to know explained in five minutes. And see you there.